welcome everyone to this edition of EMU Today TV. My name is Mark S. Lee, and I'm your host uh, for the now our fifth season. It's been a wonderful opportunity for all of us to engage and really get a chance to find out what's happening across the great institution known as Eastern Michigan University. And we have two great guests in today's as part of today's show, starting with Mr. Michael McVay. And we're going to talk about a virtual reality technology that's really changing the classroom. And uh, we're going to have him talk about it. Michael, thank you for joining me in this edition of EMU Today TV. Very nice to meet you, Mark. It's great to be here. This is my first time on EMU TV. It's a, where have you been? Where have you been? We can all, we're always looking for new content, and you can highly <laughs> recommend this. So we're so oh, glad nice. that you're here. Thank and you. my understanding, you're very welcome. You're a professor and teacher of education. Is that correct? That's correct. I've been here at Eastern. This is my 15th or 16th year. I got here in 2007 and I haven't looked back. I'm not going anywhere else. I'm here to stay. Good, good. And so for those just tuning in for the very first time, explain very briefly before we unpack the virtual reality, uh, teacher education, exactly what is that? Oh, well, in, um, in my particular department, teacher education department, we have what they call an initial teacher preparation program. So we we prepare our new teachers to get out into the field, and um, once they they once they pass into the program, they have two years worth of courses, give or take, plus at their final capstone uh, practicum program as well. Uh, I'm my course is on educational technology. It happens just before they go out into their field placement. So I get to ask them if they're excited. And of course, they always are. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And so I basically I tell people on the street, I prepare new teachers to use technology in the classroom. That's my job. And that's a nice segue talking about technology in the classroom. Recently, it was just announced that three EMU university colleges are investigating the use of cutting edge virtual reality technology to modernize students' learning. Now, from my standpoint, you know, I'm a little bit more mature. So when I think of new technology, I'm thinking of the Zoom technology in the classroom that a lot of us are using, right, to engage with our students. But that's not what this is about. Let me turn it over to you to talk about this new technology, this new virtual reality technology for the classroom and how it's being used to modernize the learning for our students. Did you did you even suggest that you were on the uh, older side? I don't know. I think I have. I you know, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, you've seen Zoom. Um, since the pandemic uh, came to town, uh, we've all become very accustomed to Zoom. But there is a next level up, and uh, I I could actually take us all back to the eighteen hundred, well, the early nineteen hundreds, and you've seen those stereo optograms. You know, you put in a little card, and you. People have always wanted to see things in three dimensions that, that they, they couldn't see in person. Uh, and that, of course, upgraded to the Viewmaster, which I know you grew up with. Uh, you know, <laughs> put in the click, 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 and you can click, see. Click. Right. Well, now, of course, we, we move up to these uh, virtual reality goggles. Now, this is, this is a real simple kind that actually uh, you can just put a cell phone or a smartphone inside and, and see using software. Uh, but... There are, there are a variety of different levels. And I, I, if I go back just a little way in time, I can take a static photograph and build a, a photo sphere using all sorts of technology where you can uh, use your mouse and look around, up, down, and around. And the sure. user things like this, this is what they call, this is a camera called a Ricoh Theta. And on the one side, there's a, there's a camera that'll take 180 degrees. And on the other side, there's another one. And the software inside stitches things together. So you have a, photosphere. So when you're out and about in the world, you can take these things. So now let's, let's go a little farther. You put on these virtual reality goggles and you can actually see and look around and in some cases walk around inside those rooms. And, uh, and that's that leads to the next thing, what our faculty are doing with these tools. Right. My biggest job here in the last few years, my biggest frustration has been breaking faculty members out of their silos to start getting some interdisciplinary interactions going on back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to mention three names. Uh, one of them is Adam Bogadane, and he was referenced in that article. He's in construction management. And one of the things that he's doing, he's built, he's built just to start a, a, a virtual reality garage. This is just a starting point, a garage. And uh, what you can do is actually go inside that garage. And as you're looking around, you see little hot spots all, all around. 
If you're not sure what they are, you can click on each hotspot and it'll define a little augmented reality piece will pop up and explain what you're looking at. The next step along for him is to create a, a, a quiz feature uh, and feedback. So uh, he, they, they can, he can ask students questions as they're walking around inside and uh, your question will pop up. The student will try and answer ABC or give a longer answer and feedback will be provided, which is great. Now, this, this is all pretty straightforward. He didn't use a camera. This is a garage that doesn't exist in the world. He used a tool called SketchUp, which is available for free from Google. You, you can download it, I can download it, and you can start building things right away. And then they use a tool called Yulio to put yourself right into the space and to put hotspots around. So this is great, this is easy for construction management, but the next thing comes up is, what happens when you wanna wire the place or use, um, it, it, engage with something that might not necessarily be safe. So right. the students learn about safety inside that environment. And, uh, and that's kind of neat. The other person I wanna to talk to you about is uh, Diane, uh, of the three people is Diane Guevara. She's a new uh, faculty member in interior design. And here's some really good news for Eastern Michigan University. Uh, our students have been building and designing uh, three-dimensional rooms using this, uh, this software where you can look around the room. And um, they, they call that rendering of the room. So that way they can change the size of a, of a, of a, of a shelving unit or, a, or a, an island and change the cladding, what it's clad in. Well, our students this year won nationally the top three positions in the, in the 3D rendering competition. And uh, this, is, this is not the first year we've done that. Uh, I don't have their names in front of me right now, but uh, congratulations to those students. We and it, it's demonstrating that our our students are are remarkably uh, facile in how to use these tools. So uh, that's Diane Rivera. So using um, and the third person I want to talk about is a fellow in a completely different department, orthotics and prosthetics. I'm not sure if you've had him before. His name is Frank Fidel. Uh, he is a fast talker. It's like listening to him is like drinking out of a fire hose. It's great. Okay. All right. Frank, he, he works with uh, uh, helping students build uh, prosthetic devices, and they have all sorts of interesting equipment, 3D printers and so forth, and laser scanners. He developed a three-dimensional and a virtual reality tour of his facility for students who are abroad or, or, or in a way to prepare them for what they're about to see inside the rooms, which has been absolutely fantastic. Um, in addition, he's using these tools and technologies to, um, to bring students from over the world. Let, let's say he wants to, to show something uh, like a pelvis bone or an ankle or something specifically to students that are online or spread around the room. They all, the world, I should say, they pop on their virtual reality helmets or their goggles and they can zoom in and look at exactly what he's looking, exactly, yeah, look at what he's sharing at the same time without them having to come to the physical physical room. So um, really this, this provides an opportunity for the students to see, become totally immersed in, 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 in the experience, if you will, with the, with, the, with the goggles that you have there. And I, and I know that we're showing you uh, as part of this video, as part of this discussion, they will you can see you kind of interacting, and we got visual uh, survey depictions of you. But uh, this is another example where students are getting that real life example, of being totally immersed, and using the technology to take them into that another realm of experience, another realm of education. Is that a fair statement? <laughs> that is exactly right, and that's the magic word: immersive. Um, it, immersive virtual reality is what we call it. I, I've had some articles published uh, on that. Uh, starting The starting point was uh, using Second Life, which has mm -hmm. been around for oh, quite a few years now. And uh, I used to be a character, an avatar in Second Life, and I had a jet pack and I could fly around. One interesting thing uh, that got me really fascinated about this was, this, uh, was a professor, I think it was in, in Kent State, I think, or somewhere in Ohio, that other place down south. Um, he created a virtual replica of the Sistine Chapel, which was pretty pretty cool. But as a an avatar, you could walk into it, fly around. Uh, I did some videos from within within this thing. What was fascinating to me was while he was building it, he said there was there were no books that talked about what the floor 
of the Sistine Chapel look like? All this wonderful stuff about the tapestries and things like that, but nothing about the floor. So just even building these 3D environments uh, it leads to some interesting new discoveries. I mentioned laser, laser uh, technology. They're using those, these technologies to uh, go outside and 3D model. Perhaps you've yeah. seen these little, little device, no bigger than, than your fist, that basically just scans an area. That's one, one way to do it. And yeah. uh, anyway, well, uh, perhaps you have more questions. And well, we have, yeah, we have a couple minutes remaining. So, so oh, really, in, in a society of automotive engineers, I just was going through some notes, says 90% of future products will be designed and developed using virtual reality technology. That is a wow. That's a aha to me. Talk about that impact on, in terms of the educational process and jobs going forward as well, briefly. Oh, my gosh. It, it, it's such a short putt, uh, so to speak. Um, I've used a program called uh, uh, Z-Space in which I could, as a, as a student, go in, look at a three-dimensional engine and move it around and take mm -hmm. it apart. And not just take it apart, I have to select using the special tools, the correct tool at the right screwdriver, the right wrench, the right torque thingy-majig. Obviously, I haven't taken apart an engine. And, uh, and put, take it apart and put it back together. All of that without ever touching a, a, a physical engine. Now, imagine that with a very rare engine, like a, a, a sports car or yeah. a jet engine. Or, in fact, last week on the space station, the International Space Station, they um, had to train the astronaut, one of the astronauts, how to disconnect a new piece of equipment, reinstall it, and reconnect everything in a precise order. So they had a team on the ground walking them through, and the person had a holographic lens on. And as, she, as the astronaut was looking, she was told where to go, and little you know, post-it notes, so to speak, would pop right. up places this is absolutely fascinating and you know when you just can't be there in person anyway it's it, it, the world of technology and the world of virtual and augmented reality is just changing it's a game changer absolutely and, and as we as Eastern we begin, is on top of it what else would be my point as we wrap up i mean one of the things that that's fascinating about this conversation i'm probably just out of time basically but one of the things that's fascinating is just how technology continues to impact the educational system and, and Michael McVeigh, I want to take uh, take this opportunity to thank you and your team for leading this charge for our university. And we wish you much continued success going forward as well. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. And it was a great pleasure to meet you, Mark. I'm, I'm going to just uh, have to stay tuned to all the future uh, episodes you uh, put out. And thanks again to Michael McVeigh and for all the great work you're doing and leading the charge in this space for Eastern Michigan University Virtual Reality. And we want you to sit back and relax and enjoy this video. Give Rise campaign. We know it's the holiday season. It's important to give back. And so let's look at what Eastern Michigan is doing in this space. And we'll continue the conversation shortly. When I think of Give Rise, I think about by giving, you're helping the students rise above. There are so many different students on our campus. We have a very unique student body and all of us have different backgrounds. So by giving, you're ensuring that every single student who comes to Eastern is having a great academic experience. When you give, you're allowing somebody else to rise. Do anything you possibly can just to make somebody else's day better, make somebody else's life a little bit better. Uh, those, those are things that people never forget. We want to continually challenge our students to do things and to work above and beyond. And that's what Eastern brings to me. And that's what the, the campaign will do. The campaign will help students achieve these goals. I ultimately just think about being inspired. So rising to the occasion, rising to a certain standard, rising to your dreams and your goals in your career. Those of us who can give our time, our talent, and our money to the least of us then get the biggest payoff. Give rise means perseverance. It means getting knocked down and trying again. It means coming up with creative ideas to solve problems. Give rise is not just to give to others. It's literally because it's, we're all mutually connected. It's to give to yourself. All right, welcome back to EMU Today TV. Again, the Give Rise campaign. We know that as we go into the holiday season, people are certainly in need. And you can see what Eastern Michigan University is doing in terms of giving back. So 
I would encourage you to do what you can to help us out as well. Help the university out, help those in need out as well. All right, we're going to continue the conversation with uh, Mr. Jeff Norris. He's uh, the uh, aquatics facility coordinator for the REC IM facility. And uh, we were just briefly chatting a moment ago, and I was sharing with him <laughs> years ago when I was president of the student body. That was one of my legacy projects in terms of representing a student body on that project. I had the honor of working with the late president of Eastern Michigan University, Dr. John Porter. And to see that that's still standing to this day, it's going through a major innovation. And we're going to have this conversation with Jeff. So, Jeff, thanks for joining me on EMU Today TV. Uh, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Absolutely. So, so from your perspective, let's just jump right into the conversation. For those who are tuning in for the first time, have not been to campus in a while, just give a very brief overview of the REC IM building. Yeah, happy to do so. Like I said, the, the REC originally opened back in 1982 when an uh, esteemed alum you know, had a, his legacy project going through and, and we've had some light upgrades, upgrades over the time, but we haven't seen a major upgrade. And it's supposed to be you know, the home of student and, and staff, you know, wellness and recreation. And you know, we're, we're just so excited to have finally have this big renovation here. Absolutely. Now, when you say a great renovation, tell our viewers how much money is being invested as part of this re renovation and what some of the transform, uh, transformation, if I can talk, what's being transformed, uh, the, the components that are really transforming this facility that's been around for a long time. Yeah, I'm happy to do so. Again, it's this was a student-driven initiative. This all came from student-driven. Then we had about poured about $16 million worth of money into these renovations with a complete overhaul of floors one and two and some definite upgrades we did see on three on floors uh, three, four, and five. Just some of some of the things that we've been able to touch is air conditioning throughout the building, especially on the basketball courts, which is a, which is a huge upgrade. Uh, we were able to redo the locker rooms on the main level. So now we have 100 lockers in, in just in, in the locker room itself. Um, now for some of the fun things, again, it's just, a, just a giant open exercise space on floor two, completely opened up, beautiful natural light. And you can see right into University Park and the fort. And then when you're really done, ready with the weights, you can head up onto floor three again, see those basketball courts resurface, four basketball courts, a brand new uh, divider curtain. Uh, and then you take it upstairs to the fourth floor. Where we have another functional fitness space with more cardio equipment and with big, uh, big open windows over kind of looking at the university before you, before you get into the fifth floor, which is a great meeting space. So it's reservable. So if you have groups you need a meeting space, you can observe the fifth floor of the rack and again, still oversee campus and see students come and go. Yeah, and for those of you tuning in, I was trying to say transformational. See, I want to make sure I correct myself. <laughs> so it, it was certainly transforming. You're certainly the university is transforming a facility that's been around for a long time. As, as students have, have been going to the renovated facility, what's been your reaction, faculty, and the, the, the community at large, if you will, what's been the overall reaction to the changes that they've seen? Yeah, great question. And it's been a little bit of speechlessness to, to come in and, and remember. It's, it's been awesome to see new students come in on tours and their eyes will brighten up and almost like, hey, can I keep my sunglasses on? It's so bright in here. Uh, but it's, it's been even more magical to see students and faculty that come in that were at the members of the old facility and seen things and go, where am I currently standing? Where What was here and what was not? So just kind of put, completely blown away with the vision uh, with the deliverance of things and, and you know, just the the overwhelming appreciation for the work that's been done has been truly amazing. You know, and, 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 and Jeff, as we are in these challenging times, being the pandemic, uh, we know there's been a lot of discussion about mental health. There's been a lot of discussion about self-care. Uh, talk about this in the context of student wellness as well. I mean, look, I mean, we're doing this virtually right now. A lot of students are as they're coming back into the classroom on campus, a lot of them are still doing classes through Zoom and other forms of technology. Talk about the importance of this renovated facility in the context of student wellness and why it's important for students to be engaged in some way, shape, or form. Absolutely. I mean, it's at the heart of what we do. So if, if there's anything that the last few years have demonstrated, it's how crucial 
the importance of physical and mental health plays, not just to our students, but to our community. We, there's uh, numerous studies out there that have demonstrated that there's a, a critical link between physical health uh, and mental health to personal and academic success. And, and actually we're committed to that and to see people come in and, uh, and we've, we've added new student lounges and, and de dedicated spaces for meditation and yoga and uh, a place, to, a set fun, safe place to do your studies in, as well as then blow off steam, right? You don't have to be lifting the heaviest, but if you're coming in and getting a good workout in and just working up a sweat and just kind of letting those anxiety go, uh, and then just see, just see the look of relief faces as, as they leave, you know, it, it's a big, big, big success for us. Well, you know, and, and as we, we were kidding earlier about my role, but when we, let's go back to the late 70s, early 80s, when I was a student there, and, and for some reason, my vision was always like, every time I thought of I am facility, I thought of basketball. Right, people just playing basketball, maybe volleyball, or running around a track. Essentially, that was then. Today, it's my understanding. You met, you referenced a second ago. People they have yoga, you have Pilates, you have spinning, you have other forms of activity that people can get engaged in. Talk about that. Yeah. So obviously, like we said, we still have the group fitness classes, which are all included in your membership, which which you typically see, and we offer. Uh, sunrise yoga, so come in early mornings, go up on the fifth floor and you get to do your yoga, calm, nice exercise breathing as the sun rises. Uh, and then we have indoor, like you mentioned, indoor cycling, pop Pilates, um, HIT, which is Pilates intensity inter interval training, TRX classes, strength and conditioning. Uh, but then we also have the intramural sports side of things. So we have um, flag football that's going on, we have soccer that's going on, and then we even have some of some different non-traditional offerings. So we have our three-point contests that are upcoming, our ping pong tournaments, uh, cornhole tournament, which is a personal favorite of mine. And again, all that included in the Record Hand membership. And beyond that, we have, uh, for the first time, we're able to boast a dedicated esports gaming facility on the second floor, as well mm -hmm. as a dedicated gaming lounge. Because it, it, you know, mental wellness and, and wellness and, and recreation doesn't just have to be physical recreation where we're lifting weights, we're playing basketball. You know, the esports e the e community is a grow huge community as it is, and it's growing, and we're able to embrace that, offer that space to students. And I'm, all, and I'm always curious, I hear of, of, of the facilities that we have on campus, or whether they're renovated or completely brand new, such as the Student Performance Center near the football stadium. I always ask my guests a very simple question. Um, as it relates to the MAC conference at large, have we seen other how do we compare, I guess, from a facility standpoint, post renovation compared to the other universities in the Mid-American Conference? That's a great question. And it's one I can answer pretty holistic because we've, throughout the pandemic, we've actually ha had a lot of meetings from that conference and it puts us uh, facility-wise right on par and slightly, a bit slightly ahead of some of our other MAC schools. Uh, what I can ha happily say is in meeting with some of our other MAC schools, uh, we're ahead of them in participation and Built people that are coming in giving building numbers. So they're, they're, we're hitting this, we're hitting our community, we're addressing those needs, and they're coming into the building and having a great time. We'll come back to the membership cost a little bit later. I do want to ask though, is this facility open to the community at large, people from Epsilani and, and the surrounding areas, or is it primarily just open to faculty, students, and staff? No, we're definitely open to the community. We are, we definitely have a um, feel a need to serve the Epsilon community as well. So definitely welcome any community members. And so so is there an online registration? If you're from the community at large, how can you become engaged? Is it walk-in? Uh, is it online uh, registration? What's the process here? Absolutely. I mean, our prices are online, so they can look those up and call us, our facility kind of thing. But also, our ultimately, we'll have to come in. They can walk in. Uh, we can direct them towards parking and all that. Uh, come in, get a great tour of the facility, and then we can they can sign up for memberships. Uh, there is uh, a couple different options that they'll have for membership. They can pay a monthly fee, a semester fee, or an annual fee. For students, um, is there an individual? Can I just come in for one class? Can I just come in, you know, one off, if you will, as opposed to signing for the entire semester? What is that fee structure like for? Uh, individual visit, if you will, versus a, a semester or a monthly fee, whatever, however you may charge. What's the charging process? Absolutely. So for, um, we'll just start at the top for a student 
semester is $50 for the semester. And that covers them each semester. That's not bad at all. It's not bad. It's, it's, a, it's a great price. Uh, faculty and staff, again, just like I mentioned with community members, they have that monthly semester or annual fee. Uh, faculty and staff, you have a $40, member, $40 monthly fee, $136 semester fee, or an annual fee of $312. And community members, again, 60 for a monthly, 204 for the semester, and 468 for the annual. Uh, if you, and we also boast day passes. So again, if you are a student that didn't opt in or opted out of that REC IM fee, uh, you do, you can come in for a, a semester pass for $10, and you get to experience the entirety facility for the day. That's from open to close. So you can, you can come in and go, you know, yeah. Well, with open to close, what are the hours? Uh, Monday through Thursday, we're open seven to nine, um, and then Friday, seven to eight, and then Saturday and Sunday, 12 to four. You know, and, and as I think about this, and, and just to clarify for those tuning in, whether on social media or through the, 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 the TV channels that we're on as well, which is uh, certainly CN19, CN channel 900, channel 900 on Xfinity. Um, you know, for those who are tuning in, is the renovation complete or is it in process? Let's clarify that for everyone. Uh, it's still a bit in process. So I'm happy to say that after the first year, we'll be introducing and officially opening our food component. Uh, we're partnered with Chartwells and we're going to bring a Shake Smart marketplace. Uh, so we have healthy options. And that was one of the things that was strongly voiced through the students that they wanted um, shake opportunities and healthy opportunities. So they're going to have that. Um, as well as uh, they, we did take some uh, flood damage. We weren't immune to some of the flood damage to our Jones Pool recreation area. So that was Mother Nature helped us out a little bit, so to speak, when, they, when she knew that there wasn't quite enough to go through. So we're gonna, there will be some work going on going with the Jones, uh, Jones Pool, which is currently down. But we do have the club pool that's uh, up and running and available. So it's still a bit of a work in progress, but for the main levels, it, are, it is complete. As we think about different facilities and not at the collegiate level for something like this, are there the opportunities to work with a personal trainer? Are the individual training sessions that you can have as opposed to just the group sessions that you referenced earlier? And we have probably about, about, a, about a minute remaining or so. Okay, excellent question. Yeah, we personal training is completely available to us. Uh, I was I was taking personal training throughout the facility, greatly enjoyed it. I would highly recommend it. But that is available at a, a fee for students and staff. In 30 seconds or less, what else would you like to share as we wrap up? Uh, I would just say that, you know, this place has the absolute, it has a magical quality about it. I came to the university in 2007 as a student, worked at the REC I am, and have returned as a professional staff at the REC I am. Yeah. And there's so many stories like that. So even if you aren't able to get an opportunity to work here, uh, be, everyone's a part of our story. And we want everyone to share that story with us. And we really feel a strong desire to reach as many people as we can. We really look forward to having more people on campus and, and come in. Thanks, Norris, Aquatics Facility Coordinator for Rec IM uh, facility as well. Thank you very much for your time. Congratulations. And uh, we appreciate it. Thanks, thanks for all the work that you're doing as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. For the rest of you, thank you very much for tuning in to this month's edition of EMU Today TV. You know, feel free to share this broadcast with as many people as you as you want to share it with. You can watch it on Xfinity CN 900, Channel 900, and you can also see it on many social media channels. So please feel free to share with as many people as possible because we want people to know what's going on at Eastern and Michigan University. All right, we will check you out next time on EMU Today TV.